The key findings are that uh, freelancers have many different types of client. They can have personal clients and organisational clients. They can be organised in different forms of relations. It's not just a simple model. And I think depending on how relations with freelancers are organised has implications for not only what freelancers do, but also the, the rewards they get from freelancing, both economic and non-economic, and particularly with their well-being as well. When you talk about those implications, how does that your research then go forwards and be utilised? Well, I think it depends on the implications for who. I mean, the implications for policymakers might be that if they're genuinely interested in improving conditions for the self-employed and freelance workers who work on their own, then they may have to seriously consider how those freelancing relations and models work. Um, if, free, if freelancers work at the end of value chains that where all the value is taken by the organisations that hire them and the organisations that organise those, those organisations, then freelancers may be left with very poor rewards at the end of the chain if it's their clients that are actually taking the majority of the value. And so then what would you say are the key takeaways perhaps for those who are either freelance themselves or for the organisations that perhaps help and support them better? I think freelancers ought to think very carefully about the clients they uh, adopt, where they have a choice, and to think carefully about the kinds of relations and terms uh, that they develop with their clients. Um, because clients are such a diverse group, personal consumers and organisations, um, it's difficult to generalise across the types of relations they may have. But for instance, a, fr a freelance worker working for a large company may find it dev very difficult to negotiate good terms. Um, particularly where that organisation is itself dealing with another large organisation which is squeezing its own terms. So it's actually, uh, it's putting the freelancer back in their context, in their business market context really, and understanding that rather than thinking of them as standalone operators. Um, they obviously have to develop relations with other people to make, make a living with other clients. And is it always an imbalance of power? Uh, I would say most of the time when freelancers are dealing with organisations there's an imbalance of power unless the freelancer has got very, very scarce skills. Um, so if you were Frank Sinatra or <laughs> somebody with that kind of you know, scarce skill then you would have a, a good deal of power and people were willing to pay for that. Where freelancers work for personal consumers the, uh, the bargaining power may be more uh, equal which maybe means that freelancers can negotiate decent or at least reasonable terms, uh, whereas when they're working for large corporates it may be very difficult because they may be very dependent on them for work and income at all, so they're difficult clients to say no to, so it inevitably makes you dependent to some degree on them.